Hi guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. So it's that time again, it's Indie Heroes Collection 4 Game of the Month. Game of the Month has returned uh, for the first time this year. Quite exciting because I really enjoy this feature uh, and the first game that we're going to play as part of uh, this series is The Curse of Elmore Bay. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the game. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Indie Heroes Game of the Month, basically we get a game every single month from April to December as part of the next Indie Heroes collection, uh, which will probably release around about February 2025. So we get a full game um, to try out and play for a full month or until you actually update the firmware on your EXP or VS, not available on the Super Pockets. Um, so this is The Curse of Elmore Bay, um, and it's from the creators of Ira the Crow Maiden, um, which was another sort of 16 bit style platforming game. Um, and this one is kind of similar. Um, it's got a kind of a dark theme to it, and I think one of the, an evil Umbra or whoever it's called, um, has taken over the town, and you're basically trying to save the town. Um, there's three uh, characters that you can actually play, which is quite cool, but I don't think the, the abilities vary much from the three characters. I couldn't really see much difference, to be honest. Um, but I like the style of it, it's pretty cool. I'm just really surprised that Blaze have actually chose um, this is the first game of the month because given the theming of this game um, it does seem very much like it should have been maybe a, a game released in October to sort of coincide with the Halloween season and um, which would have made them a lot of sense so maybe they've got another game in mind for that that month but it would have been probably better to keep this back for Halloween but anyway let's have a look at the little intro before I jump into the game Okay, so the first thing that definitely strikes you is that it's a very nice looking game. Graphics are really cool, the music's nice, the sound effects are great. Great design overall, there's no doubt about that. But there's a few things that sort of annoy me about the game, and we'll go into some, some of those in, in some detail uh, as I play through. Um, now, there's a lot of collectibles in the game. You see the, the sort of teddy bears, I'm sure there's a lot of collectibles. You can see there was an issue there with the, the bad guy just disappeared into thin air. There's, it's obviously got a few bugs here and there, and it's not major, if you go back you see it, it reappears again, so you could probably explain that away with some kind of game feature I'm sure, but there's certainly some things about the game that are not perfect at all. Um, I th felt the sort of collision detection wasn't particularly great either, at times it was very frustrating. The game does remind me a lot of Ira the Crow Maiden in, in many ways, it's like a cross between that and Tinhead. Um, Tinhead because of the frustration that kicks in with the nature but you jump to a platform and all of a sudden one of the enemies jumps straight to you and there's really no avoiding like taking a life hit um, or even dying completely which is really really frustrating um, and I felt like sometimes the collision detection was all over the place um, but okay don't get me wrong I did enjoy it to a point but it's just pretty frustrating so my tip here would really to take your time when you're playing it um, and probably use those save states and use them often otherwise you'll probably get really frustrated and die and the most frustrating part here is you have to go all the way back to the beginning of the level again which really does annoy Thank <laughs> you. 
it's quite clear that the game has replayability about it. Um, you can see here I've not collected all the candies or defeated all the enemies on this stage. So I'll probably have to go back again and um, replay it. Now, one of the reasons I'm talking about this is because you unlock abilities after you defeat the bosses. So if you can see, some of the candies just seem completely unreachable. So one of the abilities you unlock is the ability to fly. Um, therefore, you can reach those hard to reach areas and collect all the candies in every level. That's just one example. There's various abilities that you will unlock throughout the game. But as you can see here, it's very frustrating at times. I feel at times the collision detecting is terrible. Um, you try and sort of defeat the enemies up close. Sometimes if you just don't time that right, the enemy will basically walk right through you as if you don't exist and you will lose your lives. Um, and yeah, the most frustrating thing about it is the tin head um, course where you jump to a platform and immediately there's an enemy firing at you, which unless you're Superman, there's no way you're going to have time to reflex and, and miss that like here. It's just insane. Um, but you see there's lots of different collectibles, there's keys as well on the level, there's extra health and the keys unlock, I think, some exits. There seems to be various exits throughout the game as well, so there might be multiple paths that you can actually play throughout the game. So there's certainly a lot to like about this game. I just wish it wasn't as frustrating to play. Um, and there was a few things fixed, like the collision detecting just causes more frustrating as well. But certainly the graphics are lovely. There's a lot to like about this game. If you take your time, you might enjoy it a lot more than me. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go. 
So as I mentioned earlier in the game, there is the abilities. If you press the start button, you can switch between the different abilities. The default one is the shot, where it looks like you're firing candies from your pocket. Totally useless, to be honest. Um, there's also the wings, which we just uh, sort of picked up from the last boss, where you can use that to... Um, fly over gaps. It's a bit clunky to be honest, I wish it was allocated to a button so you could just switch between the abilities really quickly rather than the, the start button. So I'm not really sure that's a great um, sort of idea, it sort of slows the, the action down completely. And every time you use that ability you've got the health bar at the bottom there, the right one, sorry, it just goes down and diminishes completely so that is a bit frustrating as well, seems a bit daft that that's even uh, in the game. Anyway guys, I think it's a good game, it's just a really frustrating one. Let me know what you think of it um, and I'll catch you again in the next one. Bye for now.